The Sega Saturn, a necessity for gracious living. As far as the Western world goes, the Saturn remains possibly the most underrated game console of its respective generation. In the past, we have covered in depth why the platform didn't live up to sales expectations. Despite its many failings, the Saturn is still celebrated by a passionate following today, with games such as Knights into Dreams, Guardian Heroes and Panzer Dragoon Saga often championed for their high quality and what they brought to the table. In this upload, on the other hand, instead of discussing the big boy releases like, say, Saturn, Bomberman or Die Hard Arcade, we are going to be spotlighting the lesser spoken about fantastic games that can be found in its library. So without further ado, I am Lady Decade and these are great Sega Saturn games that you didn't play. Dark Savior, developed by Climax Entertainment, is a quirky title that mixes gameplay elements from three different genres – platforming, fighters and puzzle adventure games. Development started on this game as far back as December 1994, with a release not taking place until August 1996 a relatively long development cycle for a video game from the period. It is said that the long time this game was in the oven for was due to the Climax team having zero prior experience programming 3D cameras, producing polygon models or working with Saturn hardware. Referred to by GameSpot as the dev's sequel to Landstalkers The Treasures of King Knoll, which could be found on the Mega Drive, Dark Savior blends different gameplay elements, providing a somewhat different experience. Players take control of a bounty hunter named Garion, who is on a mission to escort a deadly monster known as Bilan to a prison island, where he will be held. As expected, things go awry, the beast escapes, and it is Garion's job to recapture him. Another interesting twist, depending on how quickly players can complete the first part of the game, will result in one of five different scenarios unfolding. Known as the Parallel System, this gives Dark Savior a strong replayability edge, which, paired with its exciting visuals, makes this one a rather compelling game. Receiving generally positive reviews on release, one GameSpot journalist describes Dark Savior as a brilliantly original and well-executed adventure that's without compare. A statement that still holds up today considering how different it looks to most other games. From one awesome game to the next, we have Darius Gaiden. The Sega Saturn in Japan is famed for its high number of high quality horizontal scrolling shooter arcade games. This title is one of the few on the hardware that would receive a global release rather than being left in its home nation. This 1994 game developed and published by Taito was the fifth entry in the Darius series and looked to build and improve on previously established concepts. Containing series core elements along with new engaging ones, the title would be applauded for its impressive visuals and great controls. Darius Gaiden has a lot to offer, featuring non-linear level progression, flashy effects and 27 different stages to play through, with Japan's Famitsu magazine even going to award the Saturn version of this title the Gold Hall of Fame status. All in all, it was a very worthy game of all the praise it received. There is so much fun to be had playing a Sega Saturn. Next up, let's discuss Three Dirty Dwarves. 2D beat-em-ups are not exactly the genre that is synonymous with the Sega Saturn, but that is precisely the sort of video game that this one is. Developed by Appaloosa Interactive, a company initially founded in Hungary, they would work with Sega to have this game published on the Saturn. Playing like a typical beat-em-up, players brawl from stage to stage, taking down enemies in a mission to the end. As the title suggests, the game can be played by up to three players simultaneously, with our playable characters varying through differing attack ranges, speed and responsiveness. The title features a rather bizarre story that sees four genetically engineered children created by the army to grow up to be perfect soldiers, instead becoming child geniuses. 
This leads to the army's general wanting to use them to develop weapons, but they escape and spend their time playing their favourite role-playing game, which revolves around dwarves. The dwarves go through a gateway and manage to enter the real world, but unfortunately, the monsters from their world have followed them. This results in an insane plot involving the dwarves fighting through the hordes of monsters to reach the children and ultimately confront the general who had the children created. The game received praise on release with Next Generation claiming it offers just enough new spins on the tradition to make it a worthwhile adventure, when we consider that now 2D beat-em-ups are more popular and mainstream than they have been in years. Maybe it's time for you to try three dirty dwarves for yourself. I know I did, and it was a great time. 1995 would see the release of Astel, an excellent 2D side-scrolling platformer with beautifully hand-drawn graphics. Playing as Astel, the game delivers what players would expect from the genre, with challenges involving guiding your character through stages, avoiding obstacles and eliminating hostile forces. Like most platformers, running and jumping are necessities, but different button combinations can also be taken advantage of to punch foes or throw them. Other attacks include the ability to punch the ground, stunning enemies nearby, or utilise a blowing manoeuvre to blow opponents away. A bird character can also be used as an assist, limitedly controlled by a second player. Developed and published by Sega themselves, Astel is undoubtedly one of Sega's lesser appreciated side-scrollers, but that has not stopped him from making cameos in the Sonic the Hedgehog Archie comic. Maybe it's about time we start giving Astel more well-deserved attention. From one cutesy-looking game to another, we have Keo's Flying Squadron 2. Following up on its Sega Mega CD predecessor, this title, developed and published by Victor Entertainment, is vastly different from what came before it. While the Mega CD game was a side-scrolling shoot-em-up, this one is a platforming game with interlaced shooter sections. Featuring what some have described in the past as intriguingly strange graphics, the title has a lot of references to Japanese culture, both ancient and modern simultaneously, which, apart from its 2D graphical presentation, is probably why this game was never released in North America. Despite this, the game would see a European release in 1997, meaning that this game could be officially experienced in English. This multi-genre platformer also features several animated cutscenes produced by Studio Periot, a company known for their work in animation work, drawing anime series such as Naruto. Keeping all of this in mind, it is no wonder this title draws a level of intrigue. But that's enough cuteness for now. Let's try something a little bit more scary. Enemy Zero is a 1996 horror-themed adventure video game developed by Warp and published worldwide by Sega. Like quite a few games in this upload, the gameplay mixes elements from various genres. Gameplay sequences alternate between interactive full motion video and real-time exploration from a first-person perspective. The interactive FMV portion of the game uses elements identical to an earlier warp game known as D, meaning if you are familiar with that one, you will have an idea about what to expect here. Players in this one take the role of an astronaut who awakens from a cryogenic sleep to find her spaceship overrun by invisible creatures hunting and killing the ship's crew. This means that gamers must explore her ship, relying on sounds to avoid or kill the invisible enemies. As you can gather from this, the game was designed to be unsettling. To add to this tension, your gun must be charged before every shot. This makes the timing of the highest importance, making it incredibly easy to get a game over. Building on the horror, your character is intentionally slow, meaning it is in the gamer's interest to sneak around undetected as much as possible. Due to this game's somewhat experimental nature, reviews were highly mixed, with some sources such as GameSpot trashing it, with others loving it and rewarding it with very high scores. 
Mean Machine Sega, for example, gave it 90%. Sega Saturn Magazine acknowledged that many Saturn gamers would find Enemy Zero excessively challenging and or slow paced, but concluded it was the most successful attempt to create a true interactive movie to date. So if that's not enough a reason to play this one, I don't know what is. The 1995 arcade rail shooter known as Sky Target would receive a Sega Saturn port worldwide in 1997. Connected to Afterburner, the porting was handled by Appaloosa Interactive, which we already mentioned earlier in this video. Like Afterburner before it, this video game sees players take control of fighter jets, with movements being controlled with an analog stick and locking on and shooting down targets, possible by moving the reticule into the appropriate position. Due to taking a great deal of influence from the earlier Afterburner games, the title would receive a rather negative reception for essentially being perceived as too shallow and too similar to Afterburner, which by that point was a decade old. If you enjoy Afterburner, you would likely enjoy Sky Target too, as it's good old arcade style rail shooter fun. Most gamers seem to remember Beyond Oasis, a Legend of Zelda game for the Sega Mega Drive, which, in part, to be fair, is likely because it has been published as part of every Mega Drive collection under the sun. Fewer people will remember its Saturn sequel known as The Legend of Oasis. This name was no doubt a further nod to Zelda. Released as The Story of Thor 2 here in Europe, the game was developed by Ancient and produced by the incredible Yuzo Koshiro, meaning that this game is from the same creators as the legendary Streets of Rage trilogy. Originally planned as a 32x game before the add-on failed abysmally, this 1996 release looked to build on its predecessor and once again includes music composed by Koshiro himself. Like what came before it, action in the game takes place in real time, with a range of attacks being executable. The game follows the adventure of Leon, who is on a quest to find six elemental spirits and utilise their powers to defeat an evil wizard. The game was praised on release for its commonalities with Zelda, in that it successfully blends action, puzzle and RPG elements. Next Generation held that it manages to expand upon the original formula cosmetically, while still offering all the great action-adventure elements that made the first game a winner. Lovely stuff. If you are looking for a relatively underappreciated first person shooter for the Saturn, look no further than Power Slave. Power Slave, released as Exhumed here in Europe, is a 1996 title developed by Lobotomy Software and Throwback Entertainment. The location is seized by an unknown force in the modern day of the late 20th century within the ancient Egyptian city of Karnak. Taking control of a hardened soldier, the player must journey to Karnak in a plot that escalates quickly into saving the world. Gamers must blast extraterrestrial insectoids, mummies, Anubis soldiers, scorpions and evil spirits. The whole thing has a sort of Doom and Duke Nukem aesthetic going for it, making this adventure highly atmospheric. The US title Power Slave is a reference to the Iron Maiden album of the same name, which also features an Egyptian themed cover. This fun game that features highly distinctive areas to explore and great use of lighting is further evidence that when people say there is nothing good worth playing on a Saturn, they are talking sh**. Let's mix things up more now by covering a racing game and a somewhat futuristic one at that. This 1997 title, Scorcher, was developed in Denmark by a development house known as Xyrinx. The back of the game's box proudly brags that by playing Scorcher, you can negotiate the fastest, smoothest and most undulating 3D terrain ever created. In a future race where your bike defies gravity and your opponents are shown no mercy. Atmospheric light sources and rendered graphics intensify the experience. While for a game that most people have never heard of, this may very well sound like Peter Molyneux-style hyperbole, but to be fair to it, it genuinely was the most graphically advanced Sega Saturn game at the time of its release. It looked so good that Sega themselves chose to ship unfinished versions of the game to other third-party developers to showcase how graphics on the Saturn had the potential to look. 
Some argued that this title was all style and had no substance back in the day, but others debated that this title becomes highly enjoyable after you master the controls. Either way, Scorcher is undoubtedly an impressive technical feat that perhaps deserves a little more credit today. While synonymous with the Atari Jaguar for being one of the few true classics available on the hardware, Tempest 2000 would later be ported over to the Sega Saturn. Developed initially by Llamasoft and designed and programmed by the legendary Jeff Minter, the game is the follow-up to the original Tempest arcade game from way back in 1981. Tempest 2000 modified what could be found in the original game by introducing new power-ups, bonus levels, enemy types and web level designs. The Saturn version of this title was programmed by High Voltage Software, with the trippy gameplay offering a similar experience to what could be found on the Jaguar. Again, the fact that this game's praises are always sung about on the Jaguar and rarely on the Saturn is further proof of how deep, compared to many other systems, the Sega Saturn's library is, with it having an enormous range of excellent titles to choose from. You have got to love the Sega Saturn. Not Sonic R though, Sonic R can go f*** itself. Here's a strange Saturn game for you, Scud, the Disposable Assassin. Based on a comic book series of the same name, this 1997 title developed by Cyrox Developments and Segasoft differs significantly from most games in that, somewhat unusually, it is played as either a run and gun title or with a light gun. These varied game modes even include the ability to play some of the game using two light guns, mirroring Scud's dual wielding of weaponry from the comic books. The story follows the same plot as the comic books with Scud the robotic assassin and his partner Drywall embarking on missions together after the former has been unlocked. This strange North American exclusive was praised for its originality and varied modes of play and control schemes, but they were also criticised for their lack of depth. Regardless of how journalists felt about it, it has to be said the game stands out from the pack. In 1995, a Data East fighting game released originally in arcades was ported to the Sega Saturn. Released in North America as Dark Legend, looking at the graphics alone it is straightforward to see why this was primarily ignored on release. Stylistically, it wasn't really on vogue, not looking more impressive than the much earlier Street Fighter 2. Still, we have massively moved on from those days with old school 2D sprite based art, in many cases, ageing much better visually than most early 3D games. Predictably, critics would criticise the game at the time for its dated visuals, but even they would be forced to acknowledge that it was still fun to play. The main gripe seems to have come with many feeling that games that look like this shouldn't have been placed on current gen systems, which is a controversial take in itself. Overall, Dark Legends is a solid little fighting game whereby players can take control of a range of fighters from around China. While some characters fight unarmed, most have their own unique weapon drawing parallels with SNK's Samurai Showdown. I'd go as far as to say that this game looks even more SNK inspired than Capcom. However, it's not hard to see why this game flew under the radar despite being decent to play. Give Dark Legend a chance. Continuing to demonstrate that the Sega Saturn library is full of experimental mayhem, we have Mr. Bones. Mr. Bones is yet another multi-genre video game that brings a lot of quirkiness to the table. Masterminded by Edward Anuzieta, best known for his work on the Echo the Dolphin series, he helped design a game with many distinctive qualities. Gamers control a reanimated skeleton working to prevent the magician who revived him from using his undead army to ravage the world. Very few levels in this game remotely play even similarly, but there are some common threads, such as action platforming occurring reasonably often. Music and rhythm stages break out like levels to memory games. Mr. Bones is all over the place, so if you are not a fan of change, this one will do in your skull. Instead of a health bar and losing health, Mr. Bones loses body parts. Lost body parts can be regained, but even when reattached, they are fragile and can fall back off. This would obviously result in many journalists feeling somewhat baffled when this one came out, leading to polarising views. Some felt this game's variety was like the work of true geniuses, while others wrote it off as a shallow platformer with mini-games in between. 
The game is weird, so I'd be curious to hear what you've got to say on it in the comment section. Galactic Attack, developed by Taito, appeared on the Sega Saturn in 1995. Like Darius Gaiden mentioned near the start of this video, this is another arcade conversion. In this case, with the original Japanese arcade version of the game being known as Ray Force. To help separate this one from the many other shooters available on the market at the time, the development team chose not to include screen clearing bombs. The team would also opt to create a game world themed around inorganic substances, taking inspiration from Konami's Gradius series. This means the whole game has a metallic-esque look with visual techniques similar to those in Space Harrier. The Japanese loved this title, becoming one of the most popular arcade hits. Western publications criticised the game for looking dated when put side by side with the likes of Virtua Fighter 2 and Sega Rally Championship. I try not to compare apples and oranges, but there you go. The game was praised for featuring no slowdown, even when loads of sprites load on the screen at once. So if this is your sort of game, you can't go wrong with Galactic Attack. That was great Sega Saturn games you probably haven't played. You may have noticed that I purposefully left Japan only games out of this video. I've already made a comprehensive video looking at 80 of them, so subscribe and check it out now.